decided to do the same thing. I'm, I'm going to be Bill or Ray Clinton now. Uh, and that's uh, and just change it like that. Well, I mean, she and did now say, all of a sudden you got to look her up. Yeah, she did say that she was different though from Barack Obama because she was a woman, Gavin. Oh my God, I'm so tired of melanin and genitalia in political <laughs> elections. Can we have some nerds, please? Can we have some economics and some foreign policy? It's politics is Dungeons and Dragons. We need nerds in the White House, not cool people and not women just because they're women. Another one. Now, we have this idea that before feminism came along in the 60s and 70s, that domestic violence against women was completely socially acceptable. Now, I don't understand how one can come to that conclusion when the President of the United States wanted to bring back corporal punishment, which had been banned, right, in most states at that time, exclusively to punish men who batter their wives. And especially since the treatment in communities for men who were battered by their wives, of which there were many, and you can see friezes and artwork from the 1600s and the 1700s that show women battering their husbands with their rolling pins and their skillets and all of that. Uh, Robbie Burns, Ode to a Henpecked Husband, all of those things. There were women who were abusive to men at that time. And the treatment that the community gave those men was either the Skimmington Ride, uh, which was the practice of the community coming around the house at night and beating pots and pans and screaming and throwing things at the house to shame him for allowing himself to be beaten by his wife. <laughs> or they put him on a donkey backwards holding its tail and rode him around the town square and threw or strapped him to a cart and threw rotten fruit and vegetables at him to shame him for allowing his wife to beat him. Okay, And these things have been just quietly erased from modern scholarship and modern uh, accounts of history, right? Back when we thought it was okay to beat your wife, right? When we thought it was okay to beat your wife, at least when it was extremely egregious, particularly egregious, we'd strap the guy to a whipping post and give him 30 lashes. When your wife was beating you, right, it was you that got punished by the community, right? So I don't know that feminism has a, a balanced perspective on any of these things. I really don't. You know, how do you make a case when they were providing 16 of the 20, 20 mandated items and the ones they didn't was like the morning after pill because they believe life begins at conception. Can't you respect somebody's deeply held religious views? I can't, first of all, I don't believe that a commercial business has religious views. It's a views, family business, and I a don't, family owned and I don't run believe, business. Okay, and what if that family were Christian scientists? Could they deny all health care? I think we've taken the idea that... That's a horrible uh, misunderstanding I, of the Religious Freedoms I, Restoration I am, Act. I am sorry. I'm quite familiar with religious freedom. And apparently you're not, not Trump. because you quite... Apparently, Patricia, not you're not Trump. familiar I, with it. I'm sorry. Do I get to speak, or is she just going to dominate over I'll everything correct I try you. to say? If you, if you want to dominate, um, then bring okay, more intelligence to the All right. Fatality. Another one. You said you weren't much of a father when they were young. No. You better now? Much. I get better as people get older. But most men are pretty hopeless when <laughs> newborn bundles arrive. And they're, they're so incredibly impressed by how women appear to know what to do. And then they think, well, I'll go off and do extra work and make some money. And they justify it in that way. Christopher, I've heard you say this. Yeah. Um, and well, now I'm saying you're hearing me say it again. No, but my point would be that I think after the 70s, that is actually not true. That may have been true. But I don't think that it's true that men are so less capable of dealing with children and that it's better that they go off, go off and earn money. You know, maybe the mother what? could go and earn some money. Did no. that never occur to you? I'm not having you? any woman of mine go to work. <laughs> you know you're going no, to get into trouble need, if you no, go they down don't there. Need, no, I won't, no, they don't need to work. They can, they can if they like, but they don't have to. You are joking, aren't no, you? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I would expect, oh, to, tell take, me I would expect to take care of them. They, Work if you want, but you don't have to. You are the commander's son, aren't yeah. you? Yes. Am, yes. You, you really mean that? Sure. You don't think women should go and work? Yeah, I said they're welcome to do that. I'm thrilled if they want to. 
If they don't want to, they don't have to. Is this that's you being I'm, ironic? Is this your for. famous attachment to irony? No. What's so, what's so difficult about it? It's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's just absolutely wrong. No, they're called the gentle sex for a good reason. You want to see them? You want to see them coarsened in the in the <laughs> coarsened in the labour market? No, no, not, not if they don't want to. They You're shouldn't 61, feel they. They shouldn't feel they have to. No, that's my view. I don't think a, a Mrs. Hitchens should have to work. It's been lovely to have you. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. It's very nice of you to invite me. Please, a huge thank you to the sexist but charming Christopher Hitchens. <laughs> thank you, Dennis. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah. It. You had to say it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> the second principle that animates the left is group justice rather than individual justice. There's another name for group justice, that's social justice. Social justice, you should understand, is actually evil. Social justice, when people say it, it's an actual evil. Because anytime you put a modifier in front of a, a term that is inherently good, you turn it into a perversion of itself. Damn! So correctness, right? If you are correct, there's truth and there's something false, you are correct. Once you add political in front of that, you're not talking about truth and falsity anymore. You're talking about if you say the wrong thing, you get shot. Damn! The same thing is true of social justice. Justice is a good. You do something, it's either good or it's bad, and you get what you deserve. That's what justice is. Add social in front of that, and you're inherently saying injustice is better than justice. Yeah. Right? Social justice suggests that you know, I, as a, as a supposedly white man, you know, Jews became white people as soon as we became successful in America. Um, Jew, you know, I, as a, as, a, as a white man, I'm responsible for paying slavery reparations, for example, in the name of social justice, even though all of my ancestors were busy getting killed by Cossacks in Russia at the time that slavery was taking place. Damn! And less than 5%, 5% of white Americans alive today have ancestors who ever held slaves. Damn! They, every white person in America, though, has to pay because of group justice. How is that just? It's not, but it's group justice, it's social justice. And, and valuing the collective, valuing people in terms of groups rather than individuals, is how you get to the point where murder in the name of the collective is okay. Damn! All you have to do to, to see this is, is just compare the American Revolution, which was about individualism, with the French Revolution, which was about collectivism. Right? The American Revolution, John Adams wrote in the Declaration of Rights for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, he specifically wrote about all men being born free and equal with certain inalienable rights, it mirrors the, the, the Declaration of Independence in the United States. If you look at the Declaration of the Rights of Man in France during the French Revolution, it's the opposite. The, 19, the, the 1789 Declaration of the Rights of Man says, the principle of all sovereignty resides essentially in the nation. No body nor individual may exercise any authority which does not proceed directly from the nation. It says law is the expression of the general will. So the collective always rules the individual. The group always rules the individual. And because the group always rules the individual, and because the group is always, th this is a very utopian view of the world. That the, the, because, see, the left doesn't believe in individual justice or that it can be achieved, but group justice can be achieved. But to pursue group justice is a utopian vision. You have to have this utopia in your head. Well, if the group is more important than the individual and the individual is in the way of progress, just steamroll the individual. Damn! And that's, how, and that's why you end up with communism killing 100 million people. Damn! Because the bottom line is that if you are seeking equality of outcome on a group level, and somebody is an outlier, well, they're standing in front of the machine, and they have to go. Individuals are either tools of the regime or they are obstacles to the regime. Yeah! Hannity, in a move that is raising a lot of eyebrows around the country, California liberal governor Jerry Brown has signed a controversial bill into law allowing transgender students in public schools to choose which restrooms, which locker rooms they want to use and whether they participate in boys or girls sports. Now, the new measure allows the 6.2 million elementary and high school students in the state to, quote, participate in sex-segregated programs, activities, and facilities based on their self-perception rather than their birth gender. Now, while California is the first state to pass such a law, not everyone's on board. Opponents of the law are questioning what it means for the other students. What about their privacy?
You know, I don't know what kind of crazy world we live in exactly, Sean, when we decide that the best way to stop bullying is to pass a law where we introduce opposite members of the sex into opposite sex bathrooms and locker rooms, where, where regardless and of the, the, the comfortability of... Yeah, and in sports teams, regardless of how other students feel, you're going to force acceptance. I mean, that's something that, you know, again, this comes back to things that are taught in the home. I talked to a school psychologist today who has been in this industry, for the lack of a better term, for 30 years. And the problem with all of this is you're allowing the government to set boundaries for children instead of children and their parents establishing and respecting their own boundaries. I mean, I know that if I was, you know, still a little girl and I'm, you know, using the girl's restroom and there's a boy that walks in that restroom, you know, when you're young girls, you're like, ah, oh, there's a boy yeah. in the restroom. I mean, because it's different. When I was a little kid too, Sean, when I was like five or six, because this goes from, from K to, to 12, I wanted to be a flower. So I don't know how well these kids know about the sexual identity and trans. <laughs> gender and all of that. I didn't know identify. anything about this. I still don't for the most part. No. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Leslie, so a 16-year-old uh, boy has a self-perception self he's a girl, and he's going to play mm -hmm. on what? The girls' varsity tennis team? Well, he certainly can try. I played on the boys' no. soccer team, although anatomically I am a female, I can give you that. Never wanted to be a flower, but and it was because we didn't have a girls' team. In this situation, when you have a transgender child and you have 16-year-old boy, perceiving and living and dressing as a girl, think about the amount of verbal, emotional, and physical abuse he has and will continue to endure when he's on the boys' teams or ostracized from so those the teams and prevented from being on those teams or being put in the locker room. Must go, That's this, not going to get better being on a girls' team. Go, I'll tell you that. It's not going to get any better than being I, on a girls' team. And I don't, just, and I don't disagree with you there, Dana. Team. That's where we agree. That's where we agree. I'm not sure this legislation like will totally, uh, reduce you know, the, the bullying. Of a term, it will reduce one side Backwards. Say it. What are you saying? Yeah, Dana? I mean, it, it, no. It seems, you know, it, it seems bass backwards, just to be frank. That sort of strategy. Let's go ahead and have a boy go on a girls team because that's going to get him less bullied. What will? You know what? What, what will mm -hmm. get individuals what less will bullied? Well, bullying. when they can look to adults and adults don't bully each other. We bully each other in politics. We bully each other in television. They have kids today have no role models except for the parents who are out there and doing good things and a few upstanding people in pop culture. Other than that, I feel horrible for children today because I look around at their choice of role models and frankly, it's slim pickings. So, you know, it starts with us. Another one. You reap the rewards of these women's sacrifices every day of your life. When you grin with your cutesy sign about how you're not a feminist, you ignorantly spit on the sacred struggle of the past 200 years. You bite the hand that has fed you freedom, safety, and a voice. In short, kiss my ass, you ignorant little jerks. Speaking of ignorance, it seems you don't know that over the past 200 years, there has been more than one wave of feminism. And someone can support older versions of feminism without supporting the new ones. So in short, we are not, in fact, biting the hand that fed us freedom, safety, and a voice. But instead, we are not taking the one that encourages us to join them in their fight for supremacy and entitlements. We respect the women who have fought for equality in the past by taking that equality and acting like equals to men instead of claiming we deserve more entitlements like spoiled little brats and setting back the world's view of woman 70 years. So no, I won't kiss your big green over emotional feminist ass. Why do, why do then the different parts of the society do better than others? I would look at it differently. I would say, and especially in the United States, I would say, why would we expect the different groups to do the same? Uh, I say especially the United States because uh, there are very few indigenous Americans, uh, Americans that come here from all over the world. And why would you ever expect that countries that had entirely different histories, located in entirely different climates, different geography, why would you expect those countries to develop exactly the same mix of skills to exactly the same degree so that their people would arrive on these shores 
in such a way that they would be represented evenly across the board. Especially since even in countries where most of the population is indigenous, you don't find it there. Uh, the Germans arrived here with piano making skills and therefore you shouldn't expect to find the Irish equally represented with Germans in the piano industry. So that when you find Steinways and other German uh, named um, pianos, you shouldn't expect to find O'Houlihan uh, pianos to the same extent and so on. Uh, nowhere in the world do you find this evenness that people use as a norm. And I find it fascinating that they will uh, hold up as a norm something that has never been seen on this planet and regard as an anomaly something that is seen in country after country.